Gena and his lovely wife that <coughs> we join him in thanking God for his life today. We also pray that he lives a healthy life from this day on, a long life and a very fruitful life. I want to say that it is not easy to attain this age of 70. Those of us coming behind have not found it easy. <laughs> and I do not even know if we may attain the, that age. I only pray that we attain that age. That was Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo illustrious and most beloved daughter of the nation sounding rather philosophical as if she had a premonition of our death some months after she made that prophetic statement as a special guest at the 70th birthday ceremony of chief Ikena Ndagoba in Abuja Mrs. Stella Obasanjo who will remain Nigeria's most flamboyant elegant likable and most awesomely beautiful first lady indeed answered the inevitable call which every mortal on earth must succumb to. However, it becomes more painful and extremely devastating that this tragic occurrence is happening at the most critical period in our nation's history when Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo's role as the ultimate bridge builder, peacemaker and social politician is needed to complement her husband's effort in reinventing the Nigerian nation. It is also sad to note that Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo's tragic death came on the eve of our 60th birthday anniversary. So, what would have been a glorious national celebration has now turned into a national mourning. As the whole nation, especially the chief mourner, President Olusha Obasanjo, come to terms with the sad reality of the great vacuum that will be created by the untimely death of this great daughter of Nigeria, nay Africa, the government and the people of Bielsa State joins millions of Nigerians and other people from different parts of the world to pay a special tribute to the soul of our dear departed First Lady of all times, Chief Mrs. Stella Ajike Obasanjo. Bielsa State was one state which Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo demonstrated a lot of love and concern for during her lifetime. For instance, between the year 2004 and this year, the First Lady was in Bielsa State two times. The First Lady received unprecedented warmth and hospitality on both occasions as Bielsans turned out a mass to give her a rousing welcome amid singing and dancing. Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo's maiden visit to Bielsa State was between May 2nd and 4th, 2004. Among other activities she performed during that visit, Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo laid the foundation stone of the Women Empowerment Center in Yonogwa, the Bayesa State Capital. Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo, who was accompanied on that visit by the wife of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Hajia Masari, and the wife of the River State Governor, Justice Mary Ordini, was also at the Yonogwa Sports Complex where she was treated to a grand civic reception attended by a huge number of Bielsans, both young and old. Highlights of Chief Mrs. Stella Barsinger's activities included distribution of sewing machines to beneficiaries of the skills acquisition scheme for women in Bielsa State, named Hands of Hope, the pet project of Her Excellency Mrs. Margaret Alamesia. She also presented startup parks to over 500 graduates of the acquisition scheme in the fields of catering, fashion designing, computer training, and hairdressing. Different women groups danced round the complex to show their love for the First Lady. Chief Mrs. Stella Barsinger's maiden state visit to Bielsa State coincided with the International Regional and African Conference of Women, which she declared open in her capacity as a grand patron of the National Council of Women's Societies in Nigeria. To round off Mrs. Stella Obasanjo's maiden visit to Bielsa State, a state dinner was organized in her honor. At the dinner, 
Mrs. Stella Barsinger spoke glowingly about the good people of Bielsa State. There was good music and entertainment to end the memorable visit of Chief Mrs. Stella Barsinger to Bielsa State. The second visit of Chief Mrs. Stella Barsinger to Bielsa State was as usual heralded with pomp and pageantry as she was received at the Potaka International Airport by a large number of dignitaries which included the wives of the Rivers State and Bielsa State Governors, the Deputy Governor of Bielsa State, other prominent officials from Rivers and Bielsa State Government. Also at the airport were other gaily dressed women who sang and danced with joy to receive the August visitor. Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo's second visit to Bielsa State began with a church service. The service, which was held at the King of Glory Chapel at the Government House in Yenagua, the Bielsa State capital, was also attended by the first family of Bielsa State, the Deputy Governor and his wife, and other prominent sons and daughters of the state, as well as their friends from other parts of the country. The service was colorful and the sermon by Apostle Zili Agre, the General Overseer of the House of Grace Church, Yenagua, focused on the need for men to give their wives undivided attention. In a remarks, which was punctuated by special rendition, Mrs. Stella Barsinger was full of praises for the Bielsa State Government for her vision to build a house of worship in the Government House. Incidentally, the church was commissioned by President Olusha Gumbasanjo on one of his visits to Bielsa State. The last leg of Chief Mrs. Stella Basinger's visit was to Amasoma, the hometown of Governor Alamesia. It was a carnival-like atmosphere in Amasoma as a large number of women had gathered to receive the First Lady amidst singing and dancing. The First Lady was full of joy as she also joined them in dancing. A special cake was cut to mark the visit of Mrs. Stella Obasanjo in Amasoma. In his vote of thanks on the occasion, Deputy Governor of Bielsa State, Dr. Jonathan Goodluck, thanked the First Lady for taking time to visit Bielsa State again and for her continued love for the people of the state. Permit me to observe every other protocol. We have time for a day like this. Like First lady has said this is the second time she's visiting us. We have always been happy when she's with us because everywhere is to be very warm. Since he came in, we've all been very active. Some of us that have been living, living a sedentary life, we've learned to be a bit active. This are indeed very trying times for our nation. Losing 117 precious lives of very promising and enterprising Nigerians and the nation's symbol of motherhood in one fell swoop in the month of October, the traditional month of celebration of our dear country, indeed defies every kind of explanation. Apart from the first family whose jewel of inestimable value has gone like a candle in the wind, virtually all families, whether from the east, west, south or northern part of the country, are affected in the Bellevue airline tragedy. All the newspapers have had a field day hitting the newsstands with all manners of superlatives to describe the tragedies, or should I say calamities that have befallen the nation. Trust the newspapers to always be at their best in such times. And since bad news attracts better attention from the newspaper readers, the sale of newspapers and advertisements in them have hit an all-time high in the last one week. Arresting and captivating headlines and creatively crafted condolence messages adorn the newspapers. Starting with the tragic air crash, some newspapers decided to title their stories Pilgrimage of Sorrow to Lisa. Multiple deaths convulse a nation with pains, while for the condolence messages we have headlines like Standing with Nigeria at this time of grief. The nation mourns. Grieving with the nation. Death 
where is thy sting, and so on. As for the first lady's death, it was like a competition among newspapers and those who crafted the condolence messages. Headlines like, First Lady's Glorious Exit, First Lady Goes in a Blaze of Glory, Still Stimulating as If Alive, credited to the Nobel Laureate Professor Wale Shoinka, to mention but a few, have graced the front pages of the newspapers in the last one week. Of course, all these messages were complemented by very colorful and glamorous appearances of the First Lady in her usually stylish way, as if indeed she was still alive. And as if responding to President Obasanjo's admonishment to Nigerians to use this period of adversity to build a unity of purpose and bond of friendship amongst themselves, this new spirit was demonstrated at the site of the ill-fated crash of the Bellevue Airline in Lisa Village near Ogo State, where Nigerians from different faiths came together to give the fallen heroes a befitting burial. However, this new spirit of friendship beyond boundaries was very prominent at all the events arranged to be the final farewell to Nigeria's fallen heroine, Chief Stella Obasanjo. At the wake-up ceremony, which took place at the government house in Abelkota, the capital of Ogun State, which is usually reserved for Christians, both Muslims and Christians were seen in large numbers. The Speaker of the House of Representatives and the Deputy Senate President, both of them Muslims, joined their Christian brothers and sisters all in the name of sharing the burden of the grief in order to make it lighter for Mr. President. A cursory look at the audience also showed a lot of people who never agreed ideologically or on party lines. That was the spirit that permeated the air throughout the wake-up ceremony where a lot of singing of soul-lifting songs rent the air. The story was the same at the MKU Abiola Stadium at Belkota, the Ogun State capital, the very day Chief Mrs. Stella Basinger was to be interred. The interdenominational service, which brought together various Christian denominations, also had in attendance such Muslims as the Vice President Alaji Atiku Abubakar and his wife, former President Ibrahim Babangida, Deputy Senate President, some members of the National Assembly, state governors, ministers and so on. Talking about those who attended the interdenominational service were Presidents of Benin Republic and Sao Tome and Principe, Kodovo's First Lady, other foreign delegations like the one from Ghana and members of the diplomatic corps. Nigerians and foreigners alike gave the First Lady a befitting farewell with an impressive attendance. What catches the attention as one gets into the stadium is the body of the First Lady, Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo, which was dressed in our national colors of green-white-green, green, surrounded by an assemblage of staff of office of traditional rulers from different parts of southwestern Nigeria as a mark of solidarity with her as a custodian of many chieftaincy titles. And for Ritz, there were quite a number of them. Although the First Lady was buried in Ogun State, the home place of her husband, the President, as the tradition of the Yorubas in the southwest of Nigeria dictates, her people from Edo State, who turned out in colorful traditional attires with fascinating beads, were on hand to bid farewell to her in the most colorful way. <laughs> Other groups from different parts of the country also performed a farewell song for Chief Mrs. Della Basinjo. There were eulogies and orations from the likes of Reverend Father Kuka, Reverend Urishe Jafo, and other clergymen. The Edo State Governor, Chief Lucky Benedian, Senator Florence Itagiwa, and the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Richard Grosny, also paid their last respects to Chief Mrs. Della Basinjo, while Olumuiwa, the First Lady's only son, who was billed to get married to his Dominican-born fiancé before his mother's death again spoke about his darling mother 
before the chief mourner, President Obasanjo's funeral oration. The clergyman blessed the body of Mrs. Obasanjo. After that, prayer was said for Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo by all clergymen that came from different denominations. President Obasanjo accompanied by the Vice President and his wife, former President Babangida, other foreign leaders and other members of the diplomatic corps stood by his wife's remains to give their last respect and ebony undertakers carried the remains of the First Lady to her final place of rest at the family home of the Obasanjo's in Abelkota, Ogun State. The most emotional point of the interdenominational service was when those very moving songs were rendered by the combined choir of the various denominations that performed at the event. As they were joined by the whole stadium, tears rolled down the cheeks of a lot of people who remembered the good times they shared with the former First Lady. It is our prayer that God will grant Chief Mrs. Stella Obasanjo eternal rest. The only befitting tribute all Nigerians can pay to the soul of the departed First Lady is to rededicate themselves to the unity and corporate existence of the nation called Nigeria.